When it comes to generators, everyone is hoping to find a bargain. And at $149, this PowerSmart 1000 really couldn't get much better. But what about the electric output? Is it good quality? Well, there's only one way to find out. We need to use an instrument designed for testing electrical generators. Now, you could certainly use something like a voltmeter or a watt gauge, but those instruments all have one major problem. They don't move quickly enough to measure the problems. We're gonna use a special instrument called a power quality analyzer. This one sells for over $7,000, but what it will tell us about this generator, you just can't find any other way. This is the PowerSmart 1200 watt generator. Now the 1200 watts is a surge rating. It can only continuously output 1000 watts of power. This is a pull start generator and it doesn't just use straight gasoline. It is a two stroke, which means you need to use both gas and oil mixed together at a 50 to one ratio. Surprisingly, the fuel tank is made of steel and it's got this integrated strainer along with that little red ring to tell you when the fuel level is at its maximum. They even give you a few accessories in the box. This is an optional carburetor jet that you use at higher altitudes, which they consider anything over 2,000 feet. Spark plug removal tool along with these battery cables, but these aren't for jump starting a battery. They're just gonna be used to trickle charge one. For 149 bucks, don't expect the dashboard of the space shuttle. They only include a single AC outlet along with a circuit breaker. You've got an on off switch and your throttle control that also activates the internal choke. Now overall, the fit and finish on this thing is surprisingly better than you would expect for the price. The air cleaner is easily accessible in the front. It's just a simple foam filter that you can rinse and re-oil. And here's the internal choke plate inside the carburetor that is directly connected so you don't have to worry about a cable breaking in the future. The spark plug is easy to get to on the back of the generator. Now the one they give you is just a cheap Chinese plug. So if you wanted to do a small upgrade, you could replace this with a genuine NGK plug and this model would take a BP5ES. The muffler is all steel and it's surprisingly oversized. A spark arrestor on the back, but you can see the quality of that thing is not very good. Now it's time to start this generator for the very first time. I've never run this thing off camera. It has never had fuel in it before. Before you start this thing up, first you've got to turn the fuel valve on. Now it is kind of hidden on the side of the generator. Once it's in the on position, switch the ignition switch to on, and then you'll want to slide your switch all the way to the start position because that will close the choke. Take a look at the amount of smoke pouring out the side, but all the generator needed to do was probably work out some oils, and after about 10 minutes of running, the smoke wasn't noticeable at all. That oversized muffler is definitely doing its job. This generator is putting out just under 60 decibels, standing 23 feet away. Next, I wanted to repeat the same test under load, so I connected this 1200 watt heater, Under load, the sound coming out of the generator was very different, but it wasn't actually much louder. I tested it again, and it only reached about 61 decibels. This heater was working just fine, but now it's time to use the analyzer to see the type of electrical output this thing is really putting out. The analyzer goes in the middle of the electrical connection, so I can plug my heater into that special gray outlet, and now the analyzer gets fed directly from the generator. And as we can see, the output here is not looking very good. The voltage in the upper left is kind of all over the place, and you can see what's supposed to be a sine wave. It's super jagged. Now compare this to what your electrical output is like in your house. The curve is looking much smoother and the voltage is completely stable. Then something surprising happens when I turn the electric heater back on. Once a load is applied to this generator, things completely change. Now while that curve isn't totally smoothed out, it is a huge improvement over what we saw when the generator was just running idle. This analyzer checks over a hundred different functions and then it correlates them into this report card and green definitely means good. You can see the voltage in the upper corner is fairly steady at about 113 volts. But the only thing you may be concerned with is this value THD that stands for total harmonic distortion. Harmonic distortion is a kind of fluctuation in the voltage output, but in generators that aren't inverter powered, it's safe to have your harmonic distortion up to about 20% before it's considered a problem. Now, when we switch that heater off, you can see that when it's idling, things are much worse with this generator. But once this thing is outputting a load, things stabilize, your voltage looks much better. This generator should work fine for things like refrigerators, electric pumps, drills. I would never use this for computers, gaming consoles, TVs, basically anything with any type of sensitive electronics. 
For runtime, this company advertises five hours running at a quarter of a load. Now I connected a small 250 watt heater, which is about a quarter load, and I could only run for just over four and a half hours, but that is still surprisingly good considering this only has a 1.1 gallon fuel tank. Now of course we still don't know about longevity, but overall I would say this generator is a pretty good deal for 150 bucks. Don't use it for electronics, but heaters, refrigerators, motors, any type of tools are going to be just fine. And if you already own one of these, be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know your experience. And hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.